Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I sat down with music artist Jonathan Bond and his testimony is powerful. The day that he got in a car accident, they were doing CPR on him. Everyone thought he was dead and God wasn't finished with him. You won't want to miss his episode. Today might be hard for you, tomorrow might be even harder, but this is your year. The Lord is leading you down a new road. Evangelist, gospel music artist, songwriter, multi-award dove nominee, Jonathan Bond has been serving God in full-time ministry since 1995. Prior to that time, Jonathan, while driving on rain slick roads, an 18-wheeler pulled into his lane and forced him into traffic, where his car was hit so hard by two different vehicles that his seatbelt was ripped in half. The next thing he remembered was lying on a wet road and people were standing over him trying to find a pulse. After a few minutes of CPR, the paramedic said, we can't do anything for him, he's dead. In his heart, Jonathan pleaded, Lord, if you will save me and let me live, I will live for you. This is his story. This is today's Nashville, this is faith. Jonathan, it is a pleasure to sit down with you this morning. I was so excited. We have a mutual friend who introduced us. Yes, so excited to be here. Thank you very much. And our friend is Barbara. <laughs> Barbara Fairchild, Fairchild. She, none other than. <laughs> I know, she called me up and she said, you have to have Jonathan. And I was so honored when we talked that you would be on the show. So welcome. Oh, thank you. So excited to be here. Thank you for what you do, making a difference in the lives of others. Oh, well, you know what? God is really working in your life too. Yes. And, uh, but I wanna share with our audience of, of what God has done in your life and where it all started. So tell me about how you got into music and- Okay, uh, I was raised in church. My whole life. Now, where were you born? And I was born in the Phoenix, Arizona area. Okay. Uh, and then my parents, at when I was about eight years old, moved to Dalton, Georgia. And raised in church my whole life. I've always believed in God, always believed in Jesus. But things were good. I didn't really need them, you know. I, I was good on my own until um, September the 24th of 1991. It was a Tuesday afternoon. I was on my way to work. It was raining really hard. An 18-wheeler pulls over in my lane. He hits my car, knocks me across the median into oncoming traffic. Two other cars hit me, and at 1.45 that Tuesday, they pronounced me dead at the scene. I'm lying there. Uh, it's, it's raining. I could hear people around me. I couldn't see anything. They I don't couldn't remember. find a pulse or anything? They, they didn't. They, uh, I, I could hear everything going on, but I heard a lady say, he's too young to die. And then I heard a guy say, he is dead. And- um, Were they doing CPR or anything? They had, uh, they had done all their procedures and I don't know what all that was. But uh, when I heard him say, he, he is dead, I heard a whole, whole different, I heard nothing else there, but I heard a whole different voice. And he said, ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive three times. And I was lying there and I knew that voice. First time I'd heard that voice, but I knew who it belonged to. And I said, God, if you will save me and let me live, I'll live for you. Nothing came out here, uh, but you know, the heart connected. And through all of that, um, my, my back was broken in nine places. Um, I had a brain aneurysm. My skull had cracked and my head was swollen. This eye had loosened, I had two ribs broken, my arm, my shoulder. Physically, I was destroyed. How old were you? I was 23. 23. 
through all of that, to, to make a long story short, um, God healed me of every bit of that. The doctor said no way would I live and then no way would I be able to have a viable life. You know, uh, then they said there's no way I would ever feed myself and I'm good at that. Uh, <laughs> you know, so like through all of that, God proved himself and it was that day that I realized he not only loves people, he loved me. You know, it changed my whole world. What was your life like in, you know, I'm sure you were in the hospital for a long time in rehab. And what was that like? Well, I left the hospital against medical advice. Now, how long were you in there? Four days. Only four days? With uh, the, all, everything going on? The day that, uh, there's a lady from my mother's church. She's really touchy-feely. And when she put her hand on you, it was there like for months. You know, it was just like, just dead weight there. She came into the room to see me and I'm lying there and, and she went to put her hand on my leg and uh, I, I didn't want that. And I moved my leg and my mother said, what did you just do? And I was thinking, oh no. Uh, and uh, you know, in my mind, I, was, I didn't want her to know I moved my leg because of her. My mother said, did you just move your leg? And I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I did, and I moved it again, and I moved the other leg, and my mother ran to get the doctor, and I got up out of the bed, had all these wires hooked to me, and I start, started pulling some of them out. Oh, not good, it hurt. But I got up, and I, the doctor said, you're not leaving, I said, I'm leaving. Uh, I was hard-headed long before I met Jesus, and I'm still hard-headed today. <laughs> but he healed me, and I, uh, I was under doctor's care for, four, uh, for two years, two full years. Yeah, broken and, uh, back. And you, there was part of your story that you talked about your mom. And she kind of knew, didn't she, that you had been in the accident? Kind of. Well, my, my mother and my brother were driving, and uh, she heard on the radio, I mean, on the radio, the, the announcer said, fatal car accident on Highway 2. Now, uh, she said as soon as he said that, God spoke to her and said, ask and you shall receive. She looked at my brother. She said, Lamar, that's Jonathan. He said, Mother, that's not the direction he would have been going. But I, normally I would go the back road, but this time I took the main road. Uh, she said, that's Jonathan. She didn't. She went straight to the emergency room and made her way there, got there. I was in a holding room. They were cleaning me up for identifications, what they were doing. And uh, my mother went in. She said, I'm Jonathan Bond's mother. He had the wreck over here on Battlefield And Parkway. she didn't know that was real. She had no idea except for God spoke to her. There had been no proof, but she knew uh, that, that mother's intuition is a gift from God, you know. And so... Uh, she, the doctor came out and he said, ma'am, we did everything we could. And she said, no, you didn't. Would you pray with me? And the doctor prayed with my mother just to be and courteous. She, and he had already told her that you had died. Right. And uh, he, he was praying with my mother. And while they were praying, the lady who was cleaning me up be, ran for help. I began to, uh, I, I'm trying to think of the proper work, but basically vomit uh, blood, and uh, she ran for help. And she's like, "Help me, somebody!" You know, the, my, the doctor got up and ran to help. My mother stayed on her knees, and uh, later I said to my mother, "I said, why did you like stay down praying instead of getting up?" You know, because I would have thought. She said, "Never ever should you ask someone for something for some kind of help that they give it to you and you don't take time to thank them." So she stayed on her knees to say thank you to God. So, and what uh, happened after that? They, I was in a coma. They put me in ICU, um, and then the rest is history, as they say. And you were out in four days. 32 years ago. 32 years yes, ago. So at this point, were you in music? No, ma'am. Uh, my, my plans were to be a CPA. I had our, I, you know, I've got a bachelor's degree in accounting, and I had plans. But thank the Lord, his plans are better. <laughs> Well, you know what? He has taken you down another journey. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Jonathan, what happened when you got out of the hospital? I went to church with my parents, and uh, I wanted to tell somebody what God had done. And I, you could look at me and tell. I mean, I was swollen. I was swollen for a long time uh, and sore, uh, but... I knew God had healed me. My, like my, 
not just my outward life changed, but there were cha- this change inside. And, and I, I stood up at church and, to, and shared a little bit of my story there and just to give God honor. Those people knew it, but I wanted to share it. There were some visitors there. They said, would you come share your story at our church? And I was like, oh, I'd love that. So I went to there and one lady stood up and she said, doesn't your family sing? My mother, my dad, and my brother and sister used to sing regionally. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, do you sing? I said, I can. She said, would you? So I sang a song there. There were visitors there. And I went to another church. They asked me to come to their church. And I shared my story and sang. And and then it's probably six months that I realized, wait a minute, I think I'm in ministry. (laughs) You are. You are. (laughs) Very slow at that. but, But just love how God directs our path. Even when we have no idea, he's still guiding our steps. You shared a little bit of a song earlier. Will you sing just a little bit for me? Mm, I, I would love to. Uh, my, my heart truly is to help people who are struggling and, and don't see hope. Uh, I, I didn't have a lot of people pour hope into me at that time, except for really my mother and dad. Uh, you, you know, they were the ones saying, you know, you and God have got this, you know, and encouraging me. Well, I feel like my calling is to help people. And so I just wrote a, a brand new song. Michael Lee and I wrote this song, but it's, it's not over, he's not done. There's still hope, there's still miracles when you're needing one. He's not finished, no, he's not through. What he's done for me, I know he'll do for you. It's not over. Oh, I love it. Uh, and uh, I just want to—I just want to remind people that there's hope beyond what we see. I think a lot of times we get focused on the the storm instead of the peacemaker. And so I just want to help. And and I love when people remind me in the middle of a storm. You know, he's still there. Just you know, refocus. So that that's sort of what I feel like the ministry that God has put me in. So at a, uh, in your 20s, he was pulling you into music ministry. Well, funny thing, uh, I saved up money for, uh, as I was growing up, my mother had a restaurant, and I, I worked there, and I put every penny up because I didn't have any bills. That was my parents' responsibility, you know? <laughs> so I put every penny up. I was going to buy me a car, and it was going to be a nice one when I turned 16. On my 15th birthday, I sat my parents down, and I said, you know the money I've saved? I said, I want to buy a piano. My mother said, you don't play piano. I said, I know, but I really want one. And uh, my dad said, you can't drive a piano to and from work. You know, the typical dad thing. Um, But for 32 years now, I've been driving a piano to and from (laughs) work. (laughs) And I remind him of that pretty often. But like God had all of this planned long before I had any idea. That's one of the things I love about him is that even through my ignorance, he still has made a way. Uh, even through my failures, he still picks me up and just re-guides me. And he does that with all of us. Um, it's just who he is. You have a story about a hitchhiker that is just powerful. Yes, ma'am. Can um, you share it? I, I was in Texas uh, driving. And I seen a guy at a distance, and he, he looked pretty rough. Uh, he got in the car, and I said, where are you headed? And he said, sir, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. He said, uh, I've been in prison for the past 14 years and I got out two days ago and I'm not sure where I'm headed. I said, where's your family? He said, uh, I was put into foster care at the age of one and I went from family to family to family. You know the story. He said, I've burned every bridge. I've destroyed every relationship. And uh, we talked for a little while and I said, I, I travel in Christian music and I'm headed to a concert. Would you want to go? And I looked at him, and I seen the look, no. However, he said, he said, sir, you've been very kind to me. He said, if you want me to go with you, I will. And I said, I would love that. So I went off, got off the exit, and got him some clothes and let him get cleaned up because he was pretty rough. And I knew it would make him feel more comfortable. Got to church, and uh, 
It, it was just beautiful. The presence of God was in that place and just beautiful. I was singing. I looked over at Josh, the hitchhiker, 40 years old. He's sitting there like this right here. No, no, no. Uh, but uh, I, I went into a song that says, Don't Hide Your Scars. And um, I watched as Josh sat there like this, and I watched him melt in his seat. And I, I, I couldn't help but just lift my hands in worship because I knew God was right there working. And then I began to sing a song, Let Me Take You to Jesus. Josh got out of his seat and ran to the altar, gave his life to the Lord. It was beautiful. Uh, to fast forward, two days later, I'm driving back to Tennessee from Texas. Tuesday evening, I get a phone call, and the lady said, I work at the hospital in Dallas, Texas. There was a young boy walking on the side of the road this morning. He was hit by a car, and it was fatal. She said he doesn't have any identification, but in his shirt pocket, he had your business card. She said, I was wondering if I describe him, if you may know him, and maybe could help us you know, get in touch with his family. And she began to describe him, and it was Josh. And uh, that tore me up. Like, it hurt me. Just physically, it hurt. But when I hung the phone up, I remembered a scripture that says, it is appointed unto man once to die. And it was right then I realized that God knew right where Josh was. And on Saturday, he orchestrated his steps as a way to get home. You know, you know we think we know God's love, the volume of love he has for us, we have no idea. He loves us. He lo Nobody cared about Josh. He had nobody. But God was right there. And he used you uh, and, to lead him. But, but just beautiful, though. You it know, like, like... So touching. How God uh, tore me up. Tore me up uh, just to know how much he loves us. No matter our failures, no matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, he loves us. Uh, and his goal is to get us home safely. I think it's so important to remember that, that w as we look at other people and you, we don't know where they are right. and where, you know, if they are believers and you stepped out and you took that risk. Well, Jesus did that for me and I want to be like him. So <laughs> if he opens up a door, I'm walking through. <laughs> well, Jonathan, we're going to talk about where God has le led you and your music career and the other lives that you're uh, touching. And we're gonna talk about that when we come back. Jonathan, the Lord has taken you all around the world. Let's talk about some of the events and concerts. And I know you're with a lot of other music artists like Barbara Fairchild and John Barry and mm -hmm. Uh, love the opportunities God has just placed me. So there, there are times that I feel like He's got me mixed up with somebody, <laughs> but I'm not telling them. I'm just enjoying the ride. How, now, how long? How many years have you been performing? Thirty-two years. Thirty-two years. Which is crazy because I feel like I'm thirty-two, but uh, I mean I'm not. But I feel that way. Does the Lord bring other uh, stories that you can remember that just people that touch your lives? Oh, all, all the time. All Any the time. recent one? As a matter of fact, I, that's what all of my books are about, is just stories from the road. But yes, Barbara, Barbara Fairchild, uh, I reached out to her about a song. We, we recorded a duet on a song, and we were, we were in Branson doing the video for that song. The next morning, I'm leaving the hotel from Branson to head back to Tennessee. And uh, as I'm walking to my car, there's this, out in the parking lot, there's this older lady, I'd guess her to be 80. She is yelling pretty heated at this young couple. I was like, oh my, like, it was pretty rough. And immediately a scripture came to my mind that the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. And I said, God, if you have me here right now for this situation, I'm available. I walked up to the car beside them as though I was going to put something in the trunk of that car. And I said, I don't know about tomorrow. The older lady, the one been yelling, she looked at me real odd. And she said, I just live from day to day. 
I said, sing on, sister. I joined in in harmony. And we sang that verse and chorus right there in the parking lot. And we got, when the, at the last part of that chorus, I said, you want to do that chorus again? And she went right on it. Oh, many things about tomorrow. And as we finished, I said, thank you for singing that with me. She said, oh, honey, that's one of my favorites. She turned around and got in the car. I still had no idea what had been going on. But I looked at the guy and the girl that she had been yelling at and they're both crying. The guy comes over and he hugs me and he said, thank you. He said, my mother has Alzheimer's and there are days that she doesn't know us and today was one of those oh, days. Right. He said, thank you for doing this. He said, is this what you do? I said, go to hotel parking lots and sing? <laughs> I said, yes, sir, sometimes. But I shared with him that scripture and I told him, I said, you'll be in this situation again, it's inevitable. I said, but now you have options. You can get lost in the battle or you can be reminded he made a way for our escape in every situation, and all we have to do is refocus. Uh, and I thought when I left there, I was like, oh, that's a good message for him. Then I realized that's great for me. You know who else I think it might be good for? Every one of us. Oh, that is uh, every powerful. single one of us. Uh, we don't have to get lost in the battle, just refocus. Jonathan, that is so powerful. So beautiful how it God does that. It <laughs> is. You know what? And, and you make yourself available to God. So okay. many people will say, oh, I'm not going to get involved. I'll just go the other way. But right. you went right in. Well, I'll tell you where I learned that. Um, I, my, my parents lived with me. And I was on my way home one day and uh, from, I don't know where. My mother said, what time will you be here? And I told her, and she said, would you take me to the mall? And I said, yes, ma'am, do you need something? She said, no, I just really want to shop. So I took her to Belk. Uh, and we're, uh, we walked in, and I said, I said, are you good? I said, I'll go to the men's department if, if you're good. And she said, yes, I'm good. So I went to the men's department. I found me two shirts, and I liked them. I went to the, re and they were on clearance. I went to the register. They were $100 for the two shirts. And I was like, I cannot believe that. So I had these two shirts in a bag. I walk around the corner. My mother has five full bags. I just spent $100 on these two shirts. She has five full bags. I said, Mother, what have you done? <laughs> she said, oh, I found some tremendous bargains. I said to Mother, how much did you spend? You know, because I take care of them. She said, oh, it's $62 or something like that. And I said, how? And I told her about the two shirts. She said, I came in looking for bargains. What did you come in looking for? And right then I put that in my spiritual walk. What are we looking for? When we walk out the front door of our home, what are we looking for? And I said, God, teach me to look like my mother looks for bargains. Teach me to look for you and opportunities for you. And guess what he's done? He has done just that. <laughs> just everywhere you look, he's present. You know, what see people message. standing on the side of the road, hungry, will work for food. I, I, don't, I don't ever give cash because I don't want to fuel a problem they're already struggling with. But I, don't, I feel like that we as Christians should never pass by someone who's asking for help and us not offer some form of Jesus. Maybe a hug, an encouraging word. I keep $5 McDonald gift cards in my car to help feed people that are struggling. And we can make a difference in the world if we just take the time to get our focus back on Him. You know? And Jonathan, it's beautiful. Love it. I love your message. <laughs> it's they're powerful. You've written how many books now? Four. Four. I'm in the process of book number five, and excited about that. And they're just all stories about you being on the road. Everywhere in Atlanta, I was sitting in traffic on on one of the side roads, and we're dead stopped. Been there about twenty minutes, and I reminded myself of the scripture uh, that the steps of the righteous are ordered. I was like, God. Like, I don't have any steps right now. It's been quite a while. What, what are we doing here? You know, just sitting parked on the road. And I looked over, and there was a guy on a retainer wall sitting down. I rolled the window down. I said, hey, have you eaten anything? And he said, no, sir. I said, come on. <laughs> he got in the car. When he closed the door, traffic began to move. The reason I was there 20 minutes because I wasn't looking for, for why I was there. I took him to Chick-fil-A, and I said, I said, uh, I'll go in and just buy, get you something, or do you want to go through the drive-thru, whatever. He said, Would you, do you have time to talk? We went in and sat down and talked and ate. He gave his life to Jesus right there at the Chick-fil-A table. 
<laughs> but our steps are ordered, and if we believe that, we have to take time to say, why am I here? Jonathan, <laughs> God is using you in a mighty way. With your books, with your albums. Now, how many albums do you have out now? 31. And back 31. Get on to 32. Let's talk about it. We have a few minutes left. Let's talk about where God is taking you and what's next for you. There, um, I, I just think that God is opening more. Our, our country's in trouble. And uh, it's, it's nobody's fault, nobody in Washington's fault. I mean, they, nobody can fix this except him. Jesus said, if the people who are called by my name, if we would humble ourselves as Christians and turn from our wicked ways, you know, that's what he said. That's what our country is needing is healing. And he's the one that can heal it if we just get our focus back on him. A lot of distractions in the world. And if we can just stay focused, and that's my prayer every day, and I fail at it every day, but God, please help me to stay focused. When I want to look to the left or to the right, hold my face that I can only look at you. Well, that's he, my desire. He is using you in a mighty way, and and um, I just He's think, awesome. Isn't he? <laughs> I like him. And you are too. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you so much for being on thank the show. You. Thank God you for what you God bless you. God thank bless you. God bless you. Thank you. My friend, are you struggling and are you without hope? Like Jonathan said, Jesus is not finished with you yet. Hang in there. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Mm -hmm.